Well, on the search for projects last year, I came across an early 90s Scott Uni track. And in the summer, I decided to test out some painting techniques to create a marble or galactic style paint job. I loved it. The process was fun and the end result is probably my favourite custom paint job to date. As it goes, the bike went unsold so in December I decided to give the bike a bit of a makeover and add some upgrades. A surly ogre fork, disc brakes front and rear, a 1x8 wide ratio drivetrain. I was happy with how it looked and judging by the views on that video, so was the YouTube algorithm. It's been around 4 months since that video though and 400 miles of commuting. So how has the bike held up? It's been a comfy, sensible commuter. I added a rear rack and cruised around. The frame size is slightly bigger than my normal. I'd usually ride a 17 inch retro ride, but this one's a 19 inch. And apart from having less seat post exposed, I haven't really noticed. I've sat tall and fairly upright, but with the ball moose handlebars helping out a bit with the backward sweep, there was absolutely no discomfort from riding it just what you want as a commuter. It's not all roses though, so here's my breakdown. Tyres. Those cheap Amazon tan walls were awful. They felt bad fitting them, but a mere 100 miles in and the rear tyre decided to fall apart. The beading just popped. I did manage to limp the bike home, but the damage was done. Eventually I got a refund from the seller and swapped out the tyres to some Schwalbe CX Comp but again, they're not that great either. They roll well, but I've picked up a few punctures with them and fell off once when I lost grip on the road. I've felt them lose grip multiple times too, especially on the front in a turn, so yeah, not very inspiring. Brakes. It's been great having hydraulic brakes on the bike. Sorry, I, I meant brake. Singular. After the rear tyre let go, I found out having a disc brake adapter on the rear was a bad idea. Or at least when combined with a pannier rack mounted to the same spot. The mounting bracket twisted in and I couldn't get it aligned easily, so I ditched it in favour for a V-brake. A V-brake. Now the front, it worked okay. It's a cheap brake and seems to need regular adjustment, always finding something to start dragging on. Gears. Do you know what? I'm going to have to say these were just okay too. I don't know whether it was the Sunray thumb shifter not quite being compatible with Shimano rear mech, or the rear mech needing extending with the derailleur adapter for the wide ratio cassette but the gears seemed to need constant adjustment. I couldn't do adjustments on the fly because the shifter didn't have a barrel adjuster so I had to rely on the rear derailleur. That's a bit of a pain. 8 speed wide ratio gearing may not be the best idea too. There's a reason larger ratio cassettes were developed with more gears is to keep the cadence smoother, obviously. Changing from one gear to the next was sometimes more of a jump than required and the change of cadence was definitely felt. I'm going to leave wide ratio for 10 speed or more now. Points of contact. The saddle was great, very comfy and I'm usually a stickler for a charged spoon. Grips, I'd have to give a 6 out of 10 they're okay, but the large pattern on them combined with what felt like a firm compound wasn't always the comfiest. And pedals, well, they were my wobbly old DMR V12, so they're still old and wobbly. Most importantly though, the paint. The paint held up very well to the mileage over the winter months. I think there's one tiny chip on the chainstay from a bit of slap, but apart from that, I haven't noticed anything to write home about. I realise I've just spent the last few minutes nitpicking and 
generally ragging on the bike I said I enjoyed, but I really did enjoy it, and it's good to be honest about the flaws. Buying cheap definitely didn't work out, and the gearing was annoying, but it still got me from A to B, and I can chalk all these annoyances up and work on them in future builds. For me now, the bike has had its day, so I'll be converting it back to a 3x7 and selling it off at a reduced price. I've got a new computer to play around on. And that's it. A little update and I guess summary into my experience on the Scott build. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen the build videos, check them out. Subscribe for more and I'll catch you in the next one.